The time has come. We are now at day 30 of the F100 hackathon. I can say that it has been very difficult to sufficiently sleep this past week as my mind has been racing at night and I've been continually thinking about the vision of this project. Where is it actually going? Whereas the first three weeks, I was just enjoying catching up with the community and simply developing and playing and having fun. Um, but we're now at the end of this project and I guess I'll start off with reviewing what is this project. This project started as a part of the launch of the Fractal NFT marketplace that was founded by Justin Kahn, David Wirtz, Mike Engel, and Robin Chan. They founded this exchange initially on the Solana ecosystem, allowing gaming NFTs to be bought and sold on their exchange. In addition to this, they also distributed 100,000 fractals for free to the community, to anyone that put their hand up and said, yes, I will take one. Okay, so let's take a look at the criteria that were set forth at the start of this hackathon. Creativity. How creative and clever is the app or game? What is the player or user experience like? Interactivity. How well did you incorporate the Fractal NFT into your app or game? How far did you go to give the Fractal NFT utility? Team. How awesome is your team? Why is your team set up for success? Traction. How far along in the development of your app or game are you? If your project has traction on social media, etc., that's great and we'll give you extra points. Vision. Do you have a plan to build this into something? What's the vision? Now on this slide, I wanted to take a look at the creativity, the team and the traction. I started off with the initial simple idea of let's play around with the fractals being snowflakes and perhaps collecting water droplets to get larger as they fall through the sky. And I developed that idea by working with the community, taking on suggestions, ideas, and playing around with the prototype game, coming up with what I believe is what the community had wanted. I started off with, once again, a very simple concept, and it's developed from there through player feedback and Discord discussions. Uh, along the way, I've managed to record 13 or so videos, I believe, uh, spread across YouTube and Twitch, put up a Twitter poll to ask, hey, what, what next feature would you like to come out, and gave six, six or so op options. Uh, I love the concept of you know sharing a to-do list and having people prioritize where, where things should go. Essentially, I'm trying to deliver what people are after. Uh, fortunately, within this, the past 30 days, I've managed to push out over 40 different builds through uh, a web browser. It makes it super easy to test being able to deploy code to a web browser and people just simply reload their page. It's been a fantastic experience. I've really enjoyed it so far. Um, and immediately playable is the current status. Uh, everyone's able to play the game in a multiplayer fashion. I can't say it's perfect. We've got bugs, obviously, to iron out. Um, but that's the current status of the game. We are able to continually work together and improve it in a multiplayer fashion, presently up to 16 players, and hoping to go beyond that at some point once the proof of concept is further materialized. Now, I've just realized at this point that the comments relating to positive feedback from community members is probably more relatable to the future vision. But nonetheless, I'll reference at this point in time and hopefully call back to it later. Uh, I had a gentleman drop up, hop in the chat the other day and he was asking where can he sell this fractal and I directed him to the fractal marketplace and then he caught word I believe through my YouTube channel um, that I created a game and, and he played it and this was his feedback uh, I promise this wasn't paid advertising <laughs> um, damn I really should come here more often I came in to sell some of my fractals for rent let's see if I can get, move my head out of the way now leaving not wanting to sell and played an awesome game credits to my fellow Aussie um, I'll refer to that later in the, in, in the vision. Um, and, and thank you to Markom 3 d for creating the world. Um, the game has currently been created by assets that were either created by me or Markom. I didn't purchase any assets from a Unity store. Oh, and sorry, I have to provide a massive call out to my daughter, Avery. She hand drew each of the fractals. Uh, we didn't use like uh, existing SVG files or anything. So she, she drew them in. It was a bit of a dad and daughter project and she got a little bit of pocket money. So <laughs> she was happy and I, I, I love encouraging her to you know, translate her art skills, her real life skills into technology. Because I believe technology is the future. I'm sure everybody here does. Um, so she's only nine years old and I'm trying to teach her as soon as possible. Okay, so now we're up to interactivity. The judging criteria explains the interactivity related to how well the fractal NFTs have been implemented within the game. I can state that presently I haven't implemented all of the attributes, that's for sure. But I thought I would break down to what has been implemented so far and where, where we are going. So currently the players do have the ability to choose their fractal. The wallet integration is connecting at the moment to wallets, but I've turned it off. I haven't had the chance to build a UI experience that lets you pick and choose your NFT. Instead, at the moment for the prototype phase, I've allowed users to type in any NFT, uh, sorry, any fractal, and you can click search and it will find the fractal and bring through all the attributes from the whole database of 100,000 fractals, which in a sense allows you to play test with fractals that you don't own and see how the attributes impact the course of play. Now, presently in the game, 
power does influence how much damage your water droplets that you fire out do to your opponents. If you shoot, at the moment you lose one health or one point that you've collected, your opponent will lose 12 points. And on top of that, there's a calculation that says, say, if your power level is 100, we divide that by 50, and that number becomes 2, and that 2 is added to 12. So you would actually do 14 damage to your opponents if you have power level 100. If you have power level 20, for example, then that divided by 50 would give you 0.4. So that would mean your damage is 12 base damage plus 0.4. So 12.4 if you had a power level of 20. I won't go through doing this calculation for each one, but I'll just refer to how it works. So purity does actually impact how quickly you grow. Velocity move, uh, Im impacts your movement speed and spin just simply impacts the rotation or like how fast you rotate. We have planned implementations to have altitude potentially impact the height of particular geographical locations, different Mount Everest and what have you, um, that you may only be able to reach perhaps if you had above, uh, an, an altitude above say 8,000 meters, or for example, or potentially we could have altitude impact your camera view that perhaps you can zoom out a little bit further early on in play if you have a high altitude. Uh, we have factions that could potentially impact special abilities. Like if you pick up a power up, there might be a generic power up that says you know, power boost or something, but depending on your faction, it may influence a different special ability from picking up that power up. A spin could potentially also generate like a bit of a defense shield that if you have a high spin rate, perhaps it's generating a bit of an energy shield around you that sort of absorbs a little bit of the damage. So instead of you receiving say 12 damage, you might only receive 10 because if you had a high spin rate, you might have like a 20% defense bonus or something along those lines. So I wanted to take a look at the development breakdown. This is to get an idea on where the majority of my effort was allocated during this past 30 day hackathon. So first of all, the multiplayer experience took me the most amount of work to implement the net coding multiplayer layer. So that was 40% of my time. I would definitely say that if I was to redo it now, I could do it in half the time, now that I'm very familiar with the networking layer. But having said that, the networking layer is reusable code. So in the event that I was going to say, create another fractal mini game, which I can refer to later, I could reuse that code set and create another game file quickly. Now I've actually highlighted the different segments of this pie in the, the blue section relates to code that is reusable. So the game UI I can reuse and the coding of the buttons, clicking buttons, doing different functions um, and the fractal attributes that have been ingested into the game. That was a considerable piece of work for me to say, have a database layer that holds 100,000 fractals. Uh, we do an API call out to that database to retrieve that information. And then we present that information in the game. So all of that piece of work in blue, so that I've spent, so in this instance, 70% of my time over this last month is actually reusable code. So I'll refer to that later on. And I would say that the, the, the section in red is not really reusable code. It's quite specific to the game. It's about the player controls around a spherical world. It's actually quite difficult for me to achieve. It required custom movement logic. Um, standard Unity game development is based on a normal X, Y, and Z plane and gravity is down. So you walk along a normal flat surface. Uh, when you put a sphere, that sphere, you have to turn off gravity. So the sphere being my planet, so I can't have the planet just fall down to a flat surface. Um, and then when I move players, there's no gravity around that world. So you have to simulate and create this logic yourself. And it's quite funky from a camera perspective, player controller perspective. Um, and that took me a fair bit of time. And that's very specific to this particular game again in a later slide. So in regards to the current Fractal Wars roadmap, this is presently some of the ideas that have come up with the community for me to be working on over the course of the next month. The implementation of power-ups. Uh, my vision is that given Marco has created this world and it's geographically correct, uh, I figured that this game presents a great opportunity to be both educational and hopefully fun. Uh, with power-ups, we could actually present like a warning message that says, in 10 seconds, we're gonna have a multi-shot power-up launching in the United States of America or perhaps a specific uh, state within America. We're going to power up launching in Australia. And this is a way to have players merge into certain areas and have battles fighting for power ups. I feel like it would be a pretty cool mechanic to implement. And that's been highly voted upon. Maybe not the geographic component, but I'm going to throw that in there. We'll test it. Um, ability to choose your factor from your wallet. That's clearly on the pipeline. Uh, a spectator mode. This would be highly desirable for Twitch. Um, I can relate to that as well. Um, I've hosted Twitch streams before for my Axie scholars. And sometimes we've had as you know almost 100 people in the stream and we were doing giveaways. And the only way that I could see that we could do giveaways was through the marble race. I don't know if you've seen it before, but essentially all of your streamers can join in the marble race. And there's a random chance that their marble is racing through this map, completely random. And they, if their marble gets to the very end, they get a prize. Uh, I've always wanted to have some sort of competitive fun game that we could play together. Um, 
and this could potentially sort of maybe, if lucky, fill that kind of geek, uh, gap that is in the market, or I believe that to be a gap. A friends list, the ability to find your friends in games or invite them to your games. Competitions, daily, weekly, monthly leaderboards, possibly giveaways. Um, and ELO scores, you know, be, become the best. You know, if you keep winning matches and you're performing highly, then you should probably, you know, if there's a big enough player base, well, let's put you with the high performing players uh, and battle it out. So I, I've sp- now in regards to the vision, I've been pondering on this decision for the last week as to the best direction going forward. Do I look into doing an NFT concept or do I just focus on the fractal community? After much consideration, my preference would be to stay within the fractal community, keep supporting as a good vibe and keep developing games that are very fractal inspired, but keep the community within the fractal channel. I figured that if I would like to create an NFT, I would need the to create my own Discord channel, my own Twitter feeds, collect people into that mass and look after them there. Whereas I find there's, I, I'm providing the most value by acting as a good vibe member within the Fractal community and providing, providing experiences for people to play games and have fun together. Whether or not I achieve that is another question. I have received good feedback, but I think I will need to create more and more games and see what people enjoy, take on feedback and address that feedback accordingly. Uh, Another piece of value that I believe I can add is educational content. So if a particular game mode is highly voted, say a Frackman being Fractal Pac-Man, a multiplayer version perhaps, if that was say the the most desired game out of a selection of 10 mini games, then perhaps that would be my next journey. And I would record it on YouTube and record it in stages, record the player movement logic, show people how to control a player, how to code that up, how to make the model, how to do the sounds and provide people insight you know, into all elements of game development if they're interested. Most importantly, we are in the NFT space, so I would need to educate people on safe ways to implement gaming NFTs into their ecosystem, whether it's sending information to the blockchain or retrieving information from the blockchain. All right, so now it's time to play the game. The game is presently hosted at fractalwars.io. Upon loading it, we are presented with a UI that allows you to search for your fractal. So one fractal that exists that I do not own, uh, do not own, is called Golden Arrain. If I click find my fractal, it will bring through the faction and all of the different attributes of that fractal. If I click enter name, now this is a little bit differently spaced out to everyone else. This is actually running on a 4K monitor, so everything is quite spread out. But there's less black space when you're running on a normal 1920 by 1080 monitor. I'll put in my name and click auto join match. Now the camera starts off being very zoomed in and your player will grow and your camera will zoom out the more points you collect. Furthermore, your player also does actually slow down a little bit uh, each point collected. You can collect about 5,000 points approximately before it's almost no longer possible to move. But by the time you've collected 5,000 points, you will have most definitely won the game. You are basically as large as the entire planet. Now, as you can see, our camera has zoomed out so far that you can almost see half of the globe, top, bottom, left and right. Now, what we can also do, if there was other players within this game, we are able to left click at them and your bullets are presently scaling. They're they're larger if you are larger and they're smaller if you're smaller. Each time we shoot, we personally get smaller and you can actually see as I'm shooting out bullets by left clicking, the camera is starting to zoom in and in the top left hand corner, our score is lowering. I'll also cut over to some multiplayer footage just so we can see what that looks like. Now, what, else, what I might also do is go back to the UI and explain that there is also the ability to create custom lobbies and tell your friends the name. So if desired, I could, making this test, I could put in any lobby name, Chris123 and click create and friends could join that particular room by also typing Chris123. Now it's important to also note that in its present state, the game is set to only run on United States of America servers, which means the game is more inherently laggy for people like myself over in Australia. And for that reason, I've temporarily disabled the ability to consume other fractals. You can shoot them and beat them in that mechanism, but the ability to consume people when it's in this laggy testing state is a little bit, it's a, it's not a very good experience. Reason being is your players, if you have 300 milliseconds in Australia and someone else has 300 milliseconds in Australia, you have approximately a 0.6 second differential on positions. So on my screen, my player, well, let's say someone else might be there and I am here, 
on their computer, if they were chasing me on their computer, they might see that they're here and they're about to collide with me. But due to the network latency, I only have information telling me that they're there. Now, how this game has been coded, and I believe it's the best way to presently do it, is when you collide with another component, we send a network message out to that other player. When you collide with another player, sorry. We send a message out to them saying, I have bumped into you, I am consuming you because I am bigger than you. And then that will send them the die instruction. So in this instance, if someone bumped into me, they're actually going to send me an instruction to die, even though on my screen, I haven't actually seen them collide with me. Now that particular issue is much smaller and can be mitigated with a few network tricks when we're on a lower latency server. So that's something we can do by opening up regionalization, whereby we have many different servers around the world. And we do actually at the moment within the networking solution I'm using. The only requirement of that is when I tick that box, I obviously need to have a player base of at least a few hundred people playing the game. So then people can actually play with people. But, you, know, you don't want someone queuing up in America by themselves and someone in Australia by themselves. So this is something that's gonna improve as time goes on. All right, this is some playtest footage from earlier playing with about 10 or so people. Bullets tend to scale with your body getting larger as you get larger. Bullets have a life of about five seconds. They take one point to fire presently and they do about 12 damage depending on how much power you have. Bullets will slow down over time just to make sure that someone doesn't shoot and it just does a full lap around the earth and, and keeps collecting people as it goes around. So they only last for five seconds and they slow down as they traverse the planet. The intent in the future is quite possibly to add in like a win mechanism, two minute rounds, and then work out some balancing. In this instance, this is the game running in its most laggy state. So it seems to run pretty well, given a lot of the people playing right now are in the Philippines and they're playing on US servers. Or that there, Neon Cat, is my daughter. And obviously she's playing in Australia and we've got over 300 ping at the moment to the server. So I'm really optimistic to see how this plays, especially with just simple firing mechanics um, as we start to regionalize the, the player base. Um, and now I'll hop out to another view when we can simply spectate the game. Let's see if we've got a cool looking world view. So here's a wireframe recording. Wireframe allows us to see players on the other side of the planet as they run around. Uh, this is wireframe mixed with shading. And we can just see all the vertices. Gives a little bit of perspective on the scale of the action. It would be pretty interesting to see how you could make this sustainable on this planet with say 50 people. It might mean that people need to grow slower, have their camera have the ability to zoom out just a little bit further. Um, but that's something that we can play with over time. Now this is like the kind of view that I would love to set up for the actual players. So if you're a Twitch spectator, you can hop around the planet, click say number one, two, three, four, or press the left and right arrows and just hop around seeing who's playing top position, second position, third position, and just get some interesting camera angles that are tracking particular players. Last of all, to sum up this video, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone in the community that play tested my game, provided suggestions and helped me path the way into making this game. I look forward to working with each and every one of you in the future, and I hope that we're successful with this project submission and we can continue to create games together. Let's see how we go. Lastly, sorry, I need to add another one. This webpage, thank you very much, Trees. Trees put this together for me. He is a fellow Good Vibe member. We've had plenty of backwards and forwards discussions in regards to gaming NFTs and our thoughts in this space. He helped me construct this page, which is pretty much detailing where the game is now, where it's going towards. The URL I'm going to be showing just over here. Feel free to go check it out, provide feedback on how we can improve it. Thank you everybody who's listened this far. Good luck to those of you who are judging the Fractal Hackathon. Hope to work with you guys soon. Have a great day, night, wherever you are. See you guys.